Welcome. You're listening to a presentation by The Honest Guys. If you haven't already, please click the red subscribe button. It's completely free and allows you to be notified when we release new material. Thank you. We hope you enjoy this presentation. The Village in the Shire Welcome to this gentle guided meditation designed with the option to let you slip into an effortless, deep and peaceful sleep at the end. Using your imagination, you will be guided into a simpler, older world of tranquility and peace. A pastoral land where those who live enjoy a life of peace and serenity. You don't need to do anything except relax and allow yourself to have this time. So, if you are ready, Let's begin your journey. Sit or lay down and make yourself comfortable. Close your eyes and we'll begin a short breathing exercise known as 478 which has a naturally calming effect on the nervous system. Inhale through the nose to a count of four. Hold to the count of seven. And then exhale through the mouth to a count of eight. Don't be concerned if you can't reach these numbers, just do what you can comfortably. This time is for you, and every moment will benefit both your mind and your body. Continue with this breathing exercise for a short while. That's in through the nose to a count of four, Hold to a count of seven and exhale through the mouth to a count of eight. Now, fall gradually into your normal breathing pattern. You find yourself walking on the gravel and dried earth of a lane or cart track. Trees form a boundary each side of you, their leaves unfurling into the rich fullness of late spring. Your feet crunch softly on 
on the ground as you walk. Birds hop and flutter among the branches, and the sunlight casts golden spears across the track, forming bars of light and shadow. The air is warm, and you smell wildflowers, grass, and blossom. Butterflies cross your path, and bees drone as they move from flower to flower. The trees block your view of what is ahead, and you keep on walking, unhurrying, approaching the voices you can hear. They are young, carefree, like children let out of school to play. As you come out of the trees, you see a small village, although unlike any you have seen before. The bright wooden doors are built into banks or low hills, with round windows looking out. The people you see are perhaps half your own size. They have merry, good-natured faces and heads of curly hair, and they do not wear shoes, their feet growing the same thick hair. It looks as if there is some kind of fate, or farmer's market, taking place. Trestle tables are dotted about, laden with vegetables, pots that might be jam or honey, pies and cakes. You can see a man at a beer barrel, and other men and women standing around, or sitting to eat and drink. The children you heard are playing, running, and a dog sits in the shade with puppies tumbling about it. The doors have wooden tubs with flowers outside them. Washing hangs on lines, drying in the light breeze, and a cat sits in the sun. The scene is happy, and even with the laughter and talk, strangely peaceful, as if this is some quiet pastoral world where hardship and violence is unknown. It is in the faces of these little folk, in their smiles, 
the contentment in their eyes. Further away, you can see a field at the center of which is a great tree. And a little way up the hill stands what seems to be a larger house with a row of windows winking as the sun hits them. As you watch, the round green door opens and one of the folks steps out, followed by a tall old man dressed in long grey robes and a tall pointed hat. He has to bend down to come through the door. The two of them look down at the activity before taking a seat close to the door and lighting pipes. The smoke twists away, blue in the warm air. Both of them are talking and smiling. You think that the old man catches your eye for a moment, although you cannot be sure. Despite your height, and the fact that you are obviously not one of them, the smaller folk seem at ease by your presence. A few of them nod at you, with friendly smiles. Encouraged by this, you walk among them. Someone offers you food, another a drink. You have no money with you, and even if you did, you are sure the currency would not be known here. But you cannot see money changing hands anywhere. There is some casual bartering going on, but no chink of coins can be heard. You take what is offered with thanks, and someone directs you to a seat, a sawn section of tree trunk. As you eat and drink, you watch, feeling every moment more accepted into this peaceful little world. group of children gather and begin to dance, some of them holding what look like tambourines decorated by ribbons. It is a lively dance, but simple, and you smile watching it. It seems to encapsulate the quiet tranquility of this place, a slower pace of life that turns with the seasons, without hurry or stress. There 
is no sophistication in these people, in their talk, which, from what you hear, is mostly about their gardens, crops, families and friends, but it is as wholesome and reassuring in its very simplicity. Next to you, someone clears their throat, and you look around, a little surprised, into the round face of a young halfling. They say, a little shyly, that you have been invited to join, and here they point up to the large house higher up. Still feeling surprised, you follow them as they weave through the people and up the path. Coming to a small gate, they open it and you follow them into the garden where the old man sits, eyes keen and bright above a long beard. He indicates with a nod of his head for you to sit down. There is no seat but a smooth grassy bank starred with daisies. You Thank him and sit. From here you can look down on the village and the activity. The sounds and laughter floating up. Further away, green hills and woods roll away into the distance, with a lane like a grey ribbon winding away. Summer clouds drift idly in the warm air. The old man says nothing. Perhaps there is nothing to say. You are sure he knows you, and you believe very strongly that you know him, but are not sure how to approach the subject. He looks at you sidelong, and his eyes hold a deep twinkle, as if he knows exactly what you are thinking. You smile back. There is a light about him, as if hidden by his appearance as an old grey man in grey robes, as if it is just a disguise for something far more powerful, but still kind. You feel, as you sit beside him, a sense of great safety. His halfling companion is not there, but you can hear the rattle of crockery from inside the open door. And just then, he steps out bearing a large tray. The young halfling smiles at you as if you are a welcome and expected guest and you feel very heartened by the gesture.
The three of you settle down with the tray as the afternoon fades into the long golden light of evening. The villagers have cleared away their trestle tables, and now it is quiet, save for a few people wheeling barrows home, or standing at a fence to exchange words with a neighbour. The sky takes on deeper colours as the evening draws on, and your companions light their pipes. You watch the old man create shapes as he expels the smoke, something no ordinary person could do. A tower, a white horse, a ship with its sails spread, the smoke sculptures, they float out into the evening before gradually fading. One white star, gleaming like white flame, rises into the darkening sky. You have come to feel so comfortable that you could easily sit here for many hours. So you are again pleasantly surprised when you are invited inside. You tuck your head, for this place is not built for people of your size, although it is charming and cosy, with polished curved wooden walls and carpets on the floor. It becomes obvious that the halfling is accustomed to accommodating bigger people, such as the old man, because some of the furniture is made to fit your size. Through one door you can see a writing desk, with a quill pen in a stand, and pieces of parchment waiting. You are led into a warm kitchen, where a kettle sings away on a hob, and a table is laid with food. Sit down, the halfling says with a friendly smile, and you do so. The old man and the halfling join you at the table. You are offered more food and drink, as they talk quietly.
the fire grows warmer and brighter as the light fades outside. The halfling potters around, clearing the table and laying out what looks like a chessboard. Sit back in your chair, feeling pleasantly comfortable and full of good food, and you watch the play. They speak quietly, as if the game is just an excuse to talk. your attention. Valley. Elves. The wood. The king. The city. Occasionally, the old man glances at you under his brows and smiles. soft conversation, the occasional click of the playing pieces lull you into a drowsy state. thing gets up and asks you if you would like to be shown to your room for the night. It is as if you were expected, and because you are tired. In an easy, gentle way, you accept. shown to a bedroom, with a bed and a small fire crackling behind a fire guard, a chair and a round window that looks over the village where soft lights are now twinkling. You yawn, feeling as if you could sleep now, feeling so safe and contented. The old 
man and the halfling give you friendly smiles as you quietly close the door behind you. For a while, you stand at the little window, smelling the sweet night air. An owl wakes somewhere and calls. The bed is comfortable. The linen smelling fresh and clean. And you feel yourself relax as you close your eyes. the door, you can hear the soft conversation between the old man and the halfling, a soothing sound that gradually lulls you toward sleep. 